And when we, we talked about Germany, but there was one thing about Germany that makes them special. And that is, if we look at the, if we look at the German philosophers, German philosophy, we will find a group that were called the idealists. Kant comes to mind as maybe the, you know, the, the culmination of all of that, right? And we find people who, these idealists, believed that there was something bigger than just us and our physical world. They were about the big picture. And they all had different ideas about how this big picture existed and they you know, they had different schemes for it and whatever. But German philosophy kind of birthed those ideas and were the kind of the fulcrum of them for many, many years. They saw these larger picture. Man is not just a body, you know, but more than that. It's kind of the spiritual realm. Now, they didn't all necessarily call it the spiritual realm. But uh, the idealists had the idea that uh, non-physical things, consciousness, was fundamental. And that was right. It was a good idea. So we need to give the German, Germans a plus for having that viewpoint. And, and you know, uh, I just mentioned just one. There's, there's probably a dozen or more of well-known philosophers that fall into that category. And yes, there was a few in France, there was some in England, there's some spread all over the world. But Germany was kind of the center of that. Hmm. Now, so we give Germany high marks for understanding bigger pictures. For a century or two, anyway, they were kind of leading the world in that sort of viewpoint. At the same time, we're going to give the Germans very high marks for the contributions that they made to quantum mechanics and to physics at around the turn of the century. It was Werner Heisenberg. It was Schrodinger. It was Wigner. It was... I don't know, I just named a few of them. Three or four or five more. And of course, it was also Einstein... But he wasn't a really big quantum mechanics contributor. He was more the relativity guy. And there was Bohr. He was in Denmark. That's where the Copenhagen interpretation, because they met on Bohr's home territory in Copenhagen in Denmark. But uh, if you look at the scientists that grouped together in Copenhagen, you'll probably find more Germans than any other nationality there. They were at the forefront also of the revolution in thinking. And if you look at all those, those scientists from that time, Planck was another one, right? Max Planck. And I'm sure there's just dozens more that's just not coming to my mind right now. But if you read the things they wrote after they had done some experiments, after the double slit experiment, after they had kind of created the science of quantum mechanics you will find all sorts of quotes that posit a reality being much bigger and broader than just the physical. You'll find all kinds of stuff that give credit to consciousness, that give credit to, to uh, a larger reality, and so on. So not only did they do the science, not only did they uh, do the math, if you will, and create the science, they also understood what the logical implications of that science was. And they wrote about it. And then, 30 years later, they were old and gone, because they were mostly in their you know, 30s and 40s and 50s and so on. So when they were gone, so were the ideas of reality being bigger. Suddenly we went back to Newton and everything's physical. It's all particles. And that double slit experiment in quantum mechanics, nobody will ever understand that. That's just weird science, you see. But it's all physical. You see, that's the, not only the Germans, but the, the others, you know, Bohr also and the rest of them. All those original people who had the genius to create quantum mechanics 
also had the genius to see that it was telling them reality was a whole lot bigger than the physical. But then we lost that. The people that came after didn't have that same vision that those founding fathers had. And I think, the again, if you, if you counted up all the people in that photo, they come from, all, uh, there's a photo of the, the Copenhagen group, and there's a whole, uh, I don't know how many people, there's probably 60, 70 people in that photo. It's a big photo. And, of course, there's Bohr and Heisenberg and Einstein, you know, and Schroeder. They're all sitting up on the front row. And uh, at, uh, they're from all over the world. They weren't just from Germany, obviously. They were from lots of places in Europe and, and uh, outside of Europe as well, and the U.S. and so on. But Germany certainly had uh, probably the largest contingent of scientists in that group. And as a matter of fact, Albert Einstein was an expatriate German, right? So we have to give Germany some credit. They've had a very large impact on the world, both in science and in philosophy. Absolutely. Uh, a much larger impact than, than you know, the size of their country versus the size of the rest of the world would indicate. Of course. So they've been a very uh, influential and, and a kind of a, a seedbed of, of thought for centuries. And, of course, you go back in past history and we say, ah, the Germanic tribes, you know, overran everybody. They were the... Uh, uh, barbarians, right? So the German tribes were the barbarians. They sacked Rome. You know, they uh, they, they uh, basically English is a has Germanic roots. You know, <laughs> they populated and, and kind of overran all of Europe. And you, we look at them as the as the um, bloodthirsty barbarians, right? But yet uh, we have to give them credit for also being the center of intellectual excellence in philosophy and science both for many, many, many years. So I think Germany is a very fitting place to bring my big toe at the end of this because in a sense, Germany was there at the very beginning of it from from the uh, uh, quantum mechanics theorists who said this physical reality isn't all there is. There's there's other dimensions to this that are bigger and from the uh, idealists who said the same thing, but in terms of, of philosophy. So uh, I, I kind of have a, uh, a soft spot in my heart for the contribution that the yes. Germans have made. Of course, they also made a contribution of World War I and World War II, but, there was that. you know, nobody's perfect, no. right? <laughs> That's just the way it is. But, uh, I think Germany is a very fitting place to end this thing because they, they were at the, at the beginning of it, philosophically and scientifically. And all of that is, is, all of that was contribution to where we are now. Absolutely. If it wasn't for the scientists who came up with quantum mechanics, we'd still be, you know, well, we still are. You know, we'd still we're be still New, Newtonians, right? We are still we'd here. all be Newtonian physicists, <laughs> but uh, we're, we're not. We're relativistic, and we're quantum mechanics, and uh, we still all swear by Newton, even though, you know, we. We know that uh, <laughs> that uh, deterministic uh, reductionism, uh, you know, materialism, those things just don't work. They're not. Uh, they knew They're it not then. credible, and sure. they knew it then, and they wrote about it then, and eventually everybody forgot it because nobody knew what to do with that. They said, "Okay, you're right. It's about consciousness. It's about this bigger reality. Now what?" Where's the equation on the bigger reality? You know, how can we tie that into the physical reality? And after everybody looked at each other, they decided, well, let's just go on. <laughs> let's let that be for a while because we just don't know where to go there. We don't see an opening in that. We see that it's true, but we just don't see an opening in what we can do with that. How can I write papers about something that is just don't understand? We don't seem that we will ever understand it. So they went off about their business and forgot all about it. And then, like I say, 20, 30, 40 years later, the world is back to Newtonian physics. Everything's physical, even though they know that that's not really true. Now, as far as...